In this video, we will be going over one of the most important tools in TurboCAD, the Select tool. The Select tool is found at the top of the left side toolbar and can also be accessed by tapping the spacebar on your keyboard. Notice that the Select tool is currently grayed out. That's because, well, there's nothing in the drawing area to select. Let's go ahead and draw a circle about 6 inches in diameter. There we go. We can now choose the Select tool and select our circle. There are two different select modes, 2D and 3D. In this video, we will be mostly going over the 2D selector, but let's take a look at some of the differences right now. Notice several elements appear near the selected entity. These allow you to make changes to the geometry. If you see one rotation handle, like I have on screen now, you are using the 2D selector. If I toggle to the 3D selector, you'll notice there are two handles. Well, actually, there are three. I can see the third handle if I switch to an isometric view. Now let's take a look at the selector properties. In the 3D selector properties, there are options that control how the selector affects different coordinate systems, options to control how the entities appear when they are moved, and what fields are visible in the inspector bar when 3D entities are selected. While we will be going over coordinate systems in another video, I will mention safe UCS mode. Safe UCS mode allows you to use the 3D selector on 2D entities without affecting their coordinate system. If you are new to TurboCAD or you work exclusively in 2D, I highly recommend turning Safe UCS on. The 2D selector has very similar options as the 3D selector. Let's get back to our workspace and switch back to the 2D selector and start examining the individual UI elements. The blue nodes and the bounding box allow you to scale. You can scale in different directions by grabbing different sides of the bounding box, or scale in both the X and Y directions by grabbing the corner nodes. For a uniform scale, hold down the Shift key or choose Keep Aspect Ratio from the local menu or inspector bar. Notice how the scale and size fields update in the inspector bar as I scale my selection. Data can be input into these fields as well. In the center of the selection, you will see the yellow reference point attached to the rotation handle. I can grab the selected entity by the reference point to move it around. Notice that the position XY fields and the delta XY fields are both updated. Position XY is the entity's position in the active coordinate system. It will match the data in the coordinate fields in the bottom right of the workspace. Delta XY will move the selection relative to its original position. So if I enter a value of negative 4 in the delta X field, it will move the circle 4 inches to the left. The handles can be moved by hovering over the yellow reference point and hitting the D key on the keyboard, or by choosing Edit Reference Point from the local menu or inspector bar. A mouse click then places the reference point. If I deselect, then reselect the circle, notice how the reference point remains in its new location. The reference point will also act as the center of rotation when I grab the green rotation handle. Notice how the rotation field in the inspector bar updates as I rotate the entity. The angle of the rotation bar can be changed by control clicking the green rotation handle. You can return the reference point to its original position by choosing Default Reference Point or Default Rotation Handles from the local menu or inspector bar. Also found in the inspector bar and local menu is the rubber stamp option. This will create copies of the currently selected entity by placing the copy with a mouse click. I will go ahead and use the rubber stamp tool to create multiple copies of the circle. There we go, now we can go over selecting multiple entities. One way to multi-select is to hold down the shift key while clicking different entities. Notice how the bounding box grows to enclose the extents of the selection and the reference point is in the center. Another way to multi-select is to click and drag a selection window around the entities you would like to select. By default the selector will be set to rectangle mode, meaning you drag a rectangular window around or through the entities you would like to select. When dragging from left to right, only the entities completely enclosed in the blue window are selected. However, if you drag from right to left, any entity the green window touches will be selected. Window Polygon allows you to draw a polygon to select the entities. Notice the window is blue. This means entities must be completely enclosed by the selection window to be selected. Crossing Polygon again allows you to make a selection by drawing a polygon but in this case the green window will select anything the selection window touches. 
Fence allows you to select multiple entities by drawing a polyline through them. Any entity the fence touches will be selected. Use Previous Selection will reselect the last entities that have been modified. For example, if I select several circles and move them, then inadvertently click away from the selection, Use Previous Selection will select these entities. We can also select entities based on certain criteria. First, I will add a little variety to the drawing we have on screen, adding a couple polygons and changing some colors and even resizing a couple of the circles. Notice how the Property toolbar above the drawing area displays the properties of the selected entity. I can also view these in the Selection Info palette. You can bring up the Selection Info palette from the Tools menu. Not only does the Selection Info palette display properties, it also displays the entity type, as well as information about the entity's geometry under Metrics. Some of this information can even be changed here. If I give a circle different major and minor radii, it will become an ellipse. Now that I have a greater variety of entities in the drawing area, I can go over the Select By options in the Edit menu. In the Select By submenu of the Edit tool, you will notice several options such as Select By Color, Entity Type, and Layer. Since most of these are fairly self-explanatory, I will focus on Query, which can do all of these and a whole lot more. Query allows you to make a selection based on search parameters. So if I want to select all of the blue and red circles, I would add line color as a common property, then check blue and red. Notice that both the line colors are in parentheses. This is done to group these criteria together. I will now add object type as a common property and choose circle. I will put AND in between the line colors and the object type. So as we look at the query, entities can be either red or blue, but must be circles. Now that I have the syntax of the query, I will save it so it can be used later. After hitting Save Query, I will enter blue and red circles as the name, save it, then hit OK. Now I can parse the query, then hit OK to see my selection. And that's about it for this video. We have gone over the basics of the 2D selector and showed several ways to make selections. For more great videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, download the latest version of TurboCAD from TurboCAD.com today.